So I have a bit of a situation here uh, I brought upon myself, like uh, is typical with me. I purchased a furnace here a few weeks back and it's been sitting here. They delivered it last week and it's sitting here in plastic yet. And I need to figure a way to mount it to the ceiling of my shop. I can't put it on the floor because, believe it or not, I'm out of space and uh, I really need to mount this like you would any other garage heater. But I didn't want to get a garage heater. I wanted to get a high efficiency furnace. This is a 96 BTU, or it's 96% efficient, and it's 60,000 BTU, which is the size I need, of course. But I need to figure out how to lift a 100-pound furnace up to the ceiling, an 8-foot ceiling, and then mount it there. So I'm only one person, so I need to come up with something to uh, accomplish this, you might say. This is one of the reasons I wanted to get something like this other than high efficiency. This has tubular heat exchangers in it instead of the clamshell riveted type. So there's a 20 year warranty on these. Uh, that's a big reason why I wanted this. And you see here, high efficiency has the exhaust pipe or I don't know which is which now, but the exhaust and intake are both right here. It uses outside air for exhaust. So if you're working with like flammable vapors on your shop, you don't have to worry about uh, blowing your shop apart because this draws in outside air and then exhausts out through too. So there's no exposure to inside vapors. Okay, I'm going to take a quick look inside here. I already have all the screws out. I like this panel how they have this by the way. This is one of the nicer removal, uh, panel removal mechanisms I've seen on furnaces. Usually they just make the whole thing so it slides off and they're a, they're a pain. So anyway, uh, Okay, everything looks like it's in place. This is 60,000 BTU. Uh, there's the burners, they're 20,000 a piece. I got a conversion kit for uh, propane for this, and of course this is the, uh, the outgoing vent of the exhaust. It's a powered exhaust. And the drain, I'm gonna have to reconfigure the drain for horizontal operation. Uh, I'm glad to see this here. This is, um, I know one other company was having problems with their pressure switches failing, uh, the Chinese ones. Not, you know, nothing against China per se, but uh, that just happened to be the ones that were failing. So these are from Costa Rica, so hopefully they got their act together. Uh, Fasco, that's pretty common, pretty typical for fans. So, uh, you'll see a lot of these components in these furnaces are shared among manufacturers, depend, you know, regardless of the price or the brand name. I do like the build quality of this one, though. I can say that right now. Um, this is a, Goodman is a, not an expensive furnace. It's actually very reasonable. And the build quality looks just the same as the ones I've seen um, that I've worked with before. And I've installed, I don't know, about three or four of them at this point. And here's the, the things for the, um, the drain parts, adapters, the owner's manual, thank God. The one online was driving me crazy. That's good. Okay, so enough of that. I just wanted to give you a look, see what's inside a furnace in case you haven't had the opportunity to look inside. I'm not a furnace tech, but uh, I've installed a few of them, so there's a safety switch. All right, so I'm gonna go figure out how to make this thing work.
All right, so when I said I had no room in my shop at all, I was dead serious. I've been in here about 18 years and I keep on bringing in equipment and I'm completely out of room. So this is a temporary measure till I get a, more property and a different building put up. Anyway, here's what I come up with so far. What you're seeing here is a couple two by fours. I made an inclined plane or ramp, if you want to call it that. What I'm gonna do with that, actually it's hybrid. It's an inclined plane and a lever uh, in one. So I'm going to put the furnace on this plane, slide it up about halfway to three quarters of the way up the plane, and then that pivots up there so I can get behind it. These are 16 foot uh, two by fours, so I can get behind it. It gives me a mechanical advantage to lift a hundred pound uh, furnace up to the ceiling. And when it gets up there, I will fix uh, this ramp into place as you know so it can't uh, so the furnace can't fall back down off of it hopefully uh, and then that will give me a chance to put the permanent fixturing on the ceiling the uh, hangers from the ceiling joists or the I guess you call them the floor joists for upstairs okay this is gonna be interesting folks I got the furnace on the ramp here and now I'm going to attempt to slide this up. I may or may not put some cardboard underneath this depending on if I care about the paint being scratched. So let's do this, huh? It was not fun thus far. All right. Still not having fun. Okay, at this point, I believe I am going to put some, yeah, so much for the paint. I believe I'm going to put some cardboard underneath this to keep it from looking like I just got it out of the junkyard. Yeah, I'm into details like that, you know. All right, I put some clamps on the boards here to keep this thing from falling to its death. You can see here right there I got the clamps on there it's the ramp is steep enough that it could fall down and slam into my acetylene tank and I don't want that so alright the cardboard is firmly affixed to the side of the furnace I have it standing up here and it's miraculously staying here by itself so I'll lay it back down perhaps and then start the journey up toward the ceiling Okay, now here comes the interesting part. I have the furnace up there. You can see it up toward the ceiling. Uh, that's the more difficult part. Now what I need to do uh, is lift this entire ramp up to its level or as level as I can get it. And then I have this 2x6 here I'm going to use as a support post to keep the uh, inclined plane toward the ceiling. And that way, after I do that, I can go ahead and put these, um, the support fixturing onto the furnace itself, the threaded rods and the angle, stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to position this here. Now, I'm going to get in here. And lift this whole thing up. So you can see it there. Witness the miracle of mechanical physics. Or something like that.
Okay, as you can see now, it's suspended on the ceiling. It's pretty secure. I have two 3 8 inch uh, pivot bolts in the back, and then also I have a 2 by 6 here supporting the back end of this frame. So this will give me an opportunity to put in the fixtures now. Alright, I'm going to take down the ramp now, so wish me luck. So I finally got the furnace mounted on the ceiling. I can't really say it was the most fun I've ever had in my life, but it wasn't too bad. And I'll give you a brief look here of how I did it. You see I used one inch aluminum tubing thin wall. It's only 16th inch, but it's plenty strong enough. And there's the aluminum brackets I made. And 3 8 16 rod as they call for in the instruction manual. I also put, um, where is it at? I'll show you here, uh, rubber, uh, foam rubber, I don't know what, what you call it, it's foam rubber with an adhesive back. That's to dampen some of the vibration so it doesn't get transmitted up into the floor joists. So, uh, everything's leveled up. I didn't show you that footage of me doing the actual leveling, not only because it took me such a long time, but I was also afraid that YouTube would demonetize my video because of all the swearing involved. So. Uh, I, you know, it is what it is. It's level now. Uh, the, here's the top. Here's the bottom. And the reason I mention that is because the instruction manual, is, this furnace is supposed to be level, top to bottom. And side to side here, on the other hand, uh, from here it's supposed to be high and then go lower down toward the end. Uh, the reason for that is, is uh, this is a, what's called a condensing furnace. It's high efficiency. It's 96%. So, Almost all of the heat is taken out of the exhaust gas, and when you do that, it causes the water in the exhaust gas to condense out in the heat exchanger. And you need to do something with the water, so it needs to run back into the condensate drain back in, in here. There's that little cap there, is where, I think, is where it's going to come out. And you need to be able to have all the, the uh, condensed water come out and then drain from there. And if you put it the opposite way, it'll pull in the heat exchanger and probably rot the heat exchanger out. I don't know what would happen, but I'm going to follow directions. I have about 3 eighths of an inch of slope on that, which is enough. Okay, um, so that's one way of putting a garage st a heater or a furnace on your ceiling. It's not a real fun task, but if you do it that way, it's, it's really not that bad. Leveling it was actually more difficult. Okay, I, found, I hope you found that helpful, and if not helpful, at least entertaining. And so if you did, give it a thumbs up, please, and if you enjoy the content of the rest of my channel, please subscribe to it, and I will be seeing you next video. See you later.